Hey everybody, this is the American Developer here. Today we're going to do a video about how to send a simple form to a database. So namely, this is a, a mix of HTML, PHP, and within that PHP there's some MySQL I commands that will do an insert of data. So currently, I'm getting my exam set up with an HTML file. That's um, how you can get PHP server going on Windows. It's a very easy way, very simple. I would prefer doing Linux to do um, PHP server. But while I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and get this HTML file going. Uh, most people should know what HTML is. It's hypertext markup language. A lot of people get confused with this as a programming language, but in fact it's a, just a markup language. It may not get you far when it comes to web development jobs. If you have any disagreement with that, just leave a comment about that. I, I would like to, I would be interested in hearing your argument about HTML working well on the job field. It's usually that you have to have HTML with another language. Like you gotta have other knowledges of different languages on top of HTML. So right here I'm creating just a simple HTML file with a body that includes a form tag. Here it, it contains all the different elements that you can place into a standard form. Maybe I'm planning to do like a video in the future where we can actually create a more professional looking form that will include Ajax so that we can actually get it looking like people would actually use it. So that's in my playbook right now to create a tutorial series about that. As you can see, there's the form tag, there's the P tag. For me, I'm using the P tag, even though in HTML5, you don't have to actually put that in there. You, mainly I'm using it so I can create a new line on the HTML page. So then there's the input and I can, it's just given like a text, a person name. So pay attention to these attributes, action, method, type name, th those will all be used in the PHP section. So, and the action is actually the PHP file that I'm planning to create in a little bit, which will um, actually send the data to the database. So I have uh, this input type of text, which is kind of like an input field of information, like a person's name and an age, and then also have a type of submit, which will be the button which will actually send the form submit information over to the form new PHP page. So I think I'm doing some last checks. I'm just going to confirm that this page has been successfully created. Once again, I recommend for exam, I can send the place the link in the description. Great stuff. Very easy to practice your PHP with in your PHP MySQL relationship type programming. As you can see, I had the form new to PHP trying to load up, and it's not there because I'm, I need to actually write it. So once you go to that page, it actually executes all of that PHP. So my HTML file is done, so now I'm going to go ahead and start on my PHP file. Okay, form new PHP and you can see that my action attribute is set to that file name so I know so my HTML file knows where to send that information to now the reason why I'm doing this is to on my submit input element on the HTML in it was actually called form submit so my PHP file is actually looking for that post in the dollar sign underscore post, it's like a built-in variable for like um, HTTP requests type things. And you can see here that I'm setting up my name and age that I submitted, that I will submit on our HTML example. And then there's your default error message that you can pass in if things go wrong. So this is me getting my MySQL portion set up. So in my case, it's localhost because I'm using exam. It's all just placed on 192.0. No, sorry, 127.0.0.1. Sorry. 
localhost root yes so I'm getting my database username password in this case I don't have a password I wouldn't recommend this if you're actually planning to use this for your job I would plan to actually set up some security and I'm using my SQLi it's more secure and there's actually more um, community involvement with MySQLi. You can use the MySQL underscore connect, but it's out of date and nobody's taking care of it anymore. So I would recommend MySQLi for that reason. And I'm creating a, as you can see, I'm creating a connection. And if there's an error with the connection, this is more like stuff you just have to memorize. This is, you can set dollar sign con to be whatever you want, but in this case, the MySQLi is an object that's built into PHP that you can use to connect to your database. So if connection is connected, the next step would be to create my SQL statement, which in this case is a insert statement because I am inserting data into the database. So insert into table tutorial with the column names, ID and name, you can set it to whatever column names you want. But the main thing is you need to make sure to set your data so it would uh, correlate with the columns that you're trying to insert to. So, and then I insert a, another if, uh, if statement. If the query was successful, I just echo out on the HTML page of that executed form new.php file that the new records it created successfully. And here, this is just to prove that my uh, data actually went into the database so this is one simple hack of you could just check the database yourself but I'm choosing to go the extra mile and actually do a select statement from the database to ensure that the data can be placed back and tell me that hey data's been there no worries you know so we got the I'm just doing additional pieces here so this is saying that uh, once uh, the select statement is done I'm actually taking the query that's straight from the connection variable once you learn more about objects classes functions and all of that it you better understand what's going on here so for example the the MySQLi object for dollar sign con there's actually a function called query and you can actually or it's probably a variable in this case correct me if I'm wrong people who are viewing but here there's the query which you can actually it, you pass in into the query function you know what that is a query function that SQL statement and then from there grab the result information and then it's more like a simple while loop and there's a number of rows from it and then while, while you're going through it, it inputs all the information until it meets the conditional statement. Which I'm assuming it means once you reach the maximum of row number, stop the while loop. And then I'm just doing a simple else statement. Uh, put out zero results if nothing's there. And I'm just doing some more uh, error catching and just to make it a little bit more polished at this point. <laughs> Dun -dun -dun. Yep, I'm just getting some errors out there. Just to let the dev know that, hey, the thing's broken. And of course, you gotta close your SQL connection because there's only so many connections you can set with your database, unless you configure that yourself, but in most cases you don't really have that so I'm showing that here the name attributes matches up with the post variables I'm just checking some last things to ensure that all my stuff is set up straight now it's time for testing this is my HTML in so I'm going to enter a name American Dev yep that's me and then enter your age 33 and then here you can see that I've posted some stuff there earlier and you can see the very last row is H33 American Dev. Well, thank you very much. Hope you have a great day. Leave comments and subscribe.